Shabbat Shalom and welcome back to the way of truth through Torah and we are here going through another Torah portion today and this is Kita San when you take or when you elevate and this one is really this is one of my favorite Torah portions I did do you hear the grumbling coming from this group? No. You, do you know what happens to grumblers? Okay. We're grumbling. We're just saying. Okay, so this is my favorite of my favorite Torah portion. I've never heard you say that. Okay, there you go. Because this is really, really cool. So we're going to have fun because we're going to see. But Well, the question today is, what was the test for the adulterous woman? And was the house of Israel adulterous? Hello? Was she an adulterous wife? Yep. Usually. She was. She was definitely an adulterous woman. And so, huh? Okay, so we've had lunch. Some people are full. Some people didn't get any food. So I see two people, they didn't get any food at all. So they're not going to be silly. Dennis didn't eat. You didn't eat either, Dennis? Three people that didn't get to eat. I had some bread and some I had some relish. I think Later, really it's doing some numbers on my tummy. Protection. We had habanero relish and it was really good, Maria. Mm, that was good. By yeah. itself it was good. Even. Okay. Soup was got good too. Thank you. Thank you. I should have made a lot more, but I wasn't expecting such a hungry crowd. I ate four bowls. <clears throat> He's why y'all didn't get to eat. <laughs> Teddy, we're going to take you out back and hold you. No, okay. You needed it. You, you did. You needed it. Okay, so we are going to be in uh, Exodus. Excuse me just a second. <coughs> we're going to be in Exodus 30, 11 through 34, 35. We are actually going to start at 32, okay? And um, we're trying something new this week, but everybody told me they don't like it. So probably the last time we're ever gonna do it. So you don't like it? No. They didn't like it. I did. Why did they not like it? Because I'm riding with Bowery. Well, I think if you hit the highlights, I think you can get Yeah, highlights you good. You said you didn't like it either. That's not what I said. It felt weird because we did we weren't reading the whole Torah portion. Yeah. And it just and felt it like we missed a lot. Because you know what? There's not one word in no. the, the scriptures that is not important. And so, you know, I, I could stop and talk on everything. You do. I had to. <laughs> I can say yeah. that because I'm old. Such an insult. When you get my age, you say anything you want to almost. So when you get her age, how old's your age? 80. <laughs> I didn't really mean for her to admit that. On. I'm proud of it. Look, if you look like this at 80, you're blessed. You know, stand up, <laughs> mama. Do the CBD one. There you go. <laughs> okay, let's get started, guys. Y'all ready? Key to song. And when the people saw that Moshe was so long in coming down. Wait just a second. Exodus, 32, verse 1. Go, girl. Let me start it in 18 of 31, just so that we've got a good lead in. Okay. And when he had ended speaking with him on Mount Sinai, and this is Yahuwah speaking to Moshe, he gave Moshe two tablets of the witness, tablets of stone written with the finger of Elohim. These are those beautiful sapphire. They're sapphire stone tablets. They're beautiful. And that's what these are. We see that in the book of Yashur. Now we're in 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moshe was so long in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aharon and said to him, Arise, make us mighty ones who will go before us for this Moshe. Look, they're acting like they don't even know who he is. This Moshe, the man who brought us out of the land of Mitzrayim, we do not know what has become of him. Guys, hello. Who brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim? Look at, look at Exodus 13, 17. If somebody beats me there, they get to read it. Okay, I, I'm already there. I won. Okay, 13, 17. And it came to be when Pharaoh let the people go, that Elohim 
did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, though that was nearer. For Elohim said, lest the people regret when they see fighting and return to Mitzrayim. Who let them out? Yahweh. Elohim, our father, led them out. It wasn't Moshe, also known as Moses. So they're, they're like, this Moses that led us out? We don't know what's happened to him. He went up on the mountain. He may be dead. And Aharon said to them, Take off the gold earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. Now, in the Samaritan text, this is not earrings. It is actually the rings on your belt. So, they're bigger rings. I, I was thinking, that would take a lot of earrings, right? I mean, little bitty gold earrings to make uh, a small calf out of. But these are actually golden belt rings which I guess it was things that attached the belt. Let me just read that for you so that you can see that I'm not making it up. 32. Um, Aharon said to them, tear off the gold rings which are in the waist belts of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. And, and then all the people took off the gold rings which were in their waist belts, and brought them to Aharon. So these are a different kind of ring than just an earring. These are bigger, more substantial. <clears throat> and so it's, he had a lot more gold than just earrings. And the people took off the golden rings, which were in their waist belts, and brought them to Aharon. He took this from their hand and he formed it with an engraving tool and molded a golden calf. And they said, this is your, my and he said, they said, they're the ones that said, this is your mighty one. O Yisrael, that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. Okay, so first they said, Moses brought us out, and now they're like, oh no, it's this little calf that can't move, can't speak, can't eat. He brought us out. He's our mighty one. Just got being through being made. He was probably still smoking from the heat of being melted down. And Aharon saw and built a slaughter place before it. And Aharon called out and said, tomorrow is a festival to Yahuwah. Now, Aharon is trying to keep them grounded. He's trying to say, this is to Yahuwah. They've already said, this is a mighty one. He's the one that led us out of Egypt. They're not letting go of this. You see, they're always trying to find something physical. They did that with yes. Shaul, making him king because what he looked like. And now here they are. They've got to have something actual to, uh, you know, the physical, yeah. And you know, guys, really, if we get into, if we're on this walk and we end up turning our back and walking away, it's usually the physical it is. that draws us out. Mm -hmm. So our eyes, you know, when they say pluck your eye off, it makes you, it really is what we see it is. that causes us so much problems. I mean, I want to keep my eyes, but. We want things. We want things that are tangible. Mm hmm that's the thing about being in the physical and yes. that's why the spiritual that's why we should just really pray that his Ruach HaKadosh his spirit will fill us every day yes so that we won't that is so key come. that is so key when you're filled with the spirit you're not going to sin They're you can't be there's uh, exactly they were very impatient and they were also probably a little bit scared I mean they just left everything they knew even Listen, the comforts. It's just like a bad spouse. You get a divorce. It should be better, but it's not. Because guess what? Now you don't have anyone in the house. Even though they were bad, probably abusive, it was better than the vacancy of no one there. So a lot of women will go back to an abusive spouse because it's what she's used to. And it's not it doesn't make it right. I mean, if a man leaves you and he's been abusive, let him walk. If you're a believer, you let him walk and let him divorce you. Then you're free. But, um, so it's the same with them. They were in Egypt and it was not good for them there. Uh, Pharaoh was taking their children. He was killing the little children. He was punishing them and they were working. They literally were Hebrew slaves. <laughs> You've heard the term, working, working me like a Hebrew slave. These were Hebrew I mean, slaves. The the <laughs> but they had things that were enticing to them, the food, uh, place to live. You know, it became 
uh, a way of life for them. It was it was what they were used to. They were used to it, and that's what Good, we are. Good, bad, ugly. This is what they were accustomed to, and they wanted to go back to. Most of them all their lives. What What does the word say? Uh, a dog will return to its vomit, mm -hmm. and a sow to rolling in its mud. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to go back and roll in the mud in Egypt because those leaks, we, we miss those leaks. We aren't any different. No, we're no different. No. Uh, that's exactly <laughs> right. So, so Seth, this is this is the whole point, and this is a lot about what this is about today. Even the tour portion this morning is we make a choice to follow Yah, but we turn back so quickly because of what we're used to, what's comfortable, what we what we know, we already know what's back there. We don't know what's up that way. And we turn and we, we run backwards, and it's not good. Listen, the, the garment that you heard us describing this morning has a breastplate. Did it have a rear guard? Mm -hmm. No. You turn and run, you've got no protection. <laughs> right? <Run? laughs> so, so, you want to be advancing, not running. Okay. So tomorrow is a festival to Yahuwah. This is what Aharon is telling all these stiff-necked, rebellious Israelites. And they rose early on the next day and offered ascending offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink, but they rose up to play. And when it says play, they were playing Bad games, <laughs> not good games. Um, Aharon just finished mixing what was holy, because it was supposed to be a festival to Yah, with the profane. And guys, this is what we do at Christmas. We take our Savior, which should be Yahusha, not Jesus, and we celebrate his birthday. <laughs> We're celebrating his birthday, because Y'all knows my heart, and we love Jesus. But look through the scriptures, and if you know the scriptures, you will know that not one place in there does it say go celebrate a birthday. It doesn't say it. Hasatan says, well, go celebrate a birthday. It's all about you. Yes, sir. The only place it does say something about the birthday in scriptures is Herod or Herodes. Yeah, it's... It, it was a pagan birthday. Yeah, but, but it does talk about... I think it's Eheron's or Lot's birthday, because but but it doesn't talk about it in a celebration. Yes, yes. So yes, but Herodes, mm -hmm. it, it does talk about his birthday because on his birthday, he yes. got to offer up that John's God. head, mm -hmm. John the Baptist. Yep. But it's not even Jesus's birthday. No, Yeshua's birthday. I mean, it's not even his birthday. I didn't know that for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, live streamers, if you're caught up in Christmas, and and I'm not listen. I know, I've got some, some new guys here today, and, and I'm getting some friends. But listen, it takes a walk to walk away from it. I mean, you can't, you don't just stop overnight, no. and suddenly you're like, yeah, I don't do Christmas. I, literally, this year I had grandchildren that were at my house during that Valentine's Day. I didn't celebrate Valentine's Day. It's pagan. It's Tammuz. We didn't exchange flowers. Now, after Valentine's Day, I went and bought some flowers on sale. Because I could get a dozen for three bucks. And I threw the card away and I've got wonderful smelling roses. But to celebrate these pagan holidays, which all came again. I'm going to refer back. I'm gonna, I, I want everybody to get. Catholic Church admits they made the change. Get this. It's full of scriptures. It's online. You can pull it up. And I printed it out. What's but, it called? Catholic Church admits they made the change. Okay. Here. With no scriptural authority. With no scriptural Listen, guys, what does the word say? Don't add to, do not take away All from the word that he has given you. Yeah? Oh, you got some blank papers. I do? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Duh. I'm going to die you. <laughs> okay. Um. So he mixed the holy with the profane. And Yahweh said to Moshe, go, get down. For your people, <laughs> your people who you brought out of the land of Mitzrayim have, have corrupted themselves. Yah saying, these are your people. You brought them out. What did we just read? 
over in um, in the first part of Exodus. Y'all brought them out. He's the one that led them out. But he says, these are your people. They're corrupt. They are wicked. And they're your people. And you brought them out. And um, they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and have bowed themselves to it. And slaughtered to it and said, this is your mighty one, O Yisrael, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, I have seen this people. And see, it is a stiff-necked people. They are unwilling to be subjected to correction. They're, they don't want to be corrected. They're right. Listen, <laughs> who in society today says, I'm not under that law? If, if you mention, yeah, we're a study group, we're studying Torah, we're Torah observant, I'm not under that law. Why? Why wouldn't you want to be under the law? It blesses you. It protects you. It gives you wisdom. It transforms you. If you're walking it out, it transforms you into the only one who ever walked it out. You will resemble him. When you get to the gate, he's going to know who you are because you're going to resemble him. Because you've been walking out Torah. He's going to recognize the smell and the look. He's going to know who you are. Otherwise, guess what? Get away from me. I don't know you. Lord, Lord. You know what Lord means? Baal. Baal. Who is Baal? He's one of the mighty ones that they sacrifice children to. Okay? He's also, it's also a bridegroom. But the, the term itself it means Baal. Um, so this stiff-necked people, they don't want to be corrected. Today, they don't want to be corrected. They don't want to know that there's a law. They don't even, they've never even read it. Even Moses in, in Deuteronomy, he tells you, it's not too hard. It's not so high that someone has, we have to send someone to heaven to get it. And it's not so low that we have to send someone down beneath to get it. And Shaul repeats what Moshe, Moshe says. He said, this is not hard. It's not hard. Okay, in verse 10, and now... Yahuwah says, let me alone that my wrath might burn against them and I consume them and I'm going to make a great nation of you. Who wouldn't say, uh, yeah, I think that's a grand <laughs> idea. Let's do it. Go get them, y'all. Just go get them and you can start over with me. Who wouldn't do that but not Moshe? Our Moshe, he was like this amazing man, humble beyond anything. He's thinking about y'all. He's also thinking about his people. Moshe pleaded with Yahuwah, his Elohim, and said, Yahuwah, why does your wrath burn against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Mitzrayim with great power and with a strong hand? And guys, listen, what does the name Yahushua mean? What does our Savior say mean? Strong arm, right arm of uh, salvation. Strong right arm of salvation. So this is Yahushua's name. So he brought these people out with great power and with the strong arm, with Yahushua. That's right. With the, the salvation, our Savior. Vicki, do you think Moshe might have remembered what Yah had told Abraham? Oh, yeah. He remembered what he told. And that's what we've got to understand. We've got to know what he tells us. Yes, yes. Well, and Moshe reminded Moshe was very quick to say, don't forget, you made a covenant. That's right, he did. He did. Yeah, so Moshe reminds him, you so made a covenant. Remembered. Mm -hmm. He remembered it. That's oh, he knew it, us. yeah. We, when we study, we, we feed it into our being, into our heart, so that we can use it later yes. in our life. Because that's, what, that's what's going to help us through the trials and the tribulations of life, is, is his uh, scriptures coming to heart and reminding us, of so many blessings and promises he has for us. That's right. Not not look at the situation the storm we're going through. That's right. Because that's when you're going to get fearful and you can't you get paralyzed. You can't do anything. That's right. But we've got to remember, just like Moshe did here, of what he had told Abraham. Uh huh. And what did you tell Abraham? What you just said. What did you say? A shortcut. That he made a covenant. What what? Abraham. The, the, the covenant he made with Abraham is if you will guard to do the commandments I'm giving you, I'm going to increase your seed. 
I'm going to bless them and I'm going to give them this land mm -hmm. where I'm taking you. And this he is, destroyed all these little dudes here. <coughs> They've been done. Uh-huh. He, he would have. But but look what Moshe did here. He turned everything back around. What, what did y'all say? Your people that you brought out. Moshe turned around and he said, oh no, the people you brought out, they're your people. Mm -hmm. um, you brought out the land of Mitzrayim with great power and with a strong arm. He's reminding y'all of how strong he was. You brought them out with strength and power. Why should the Mitzrites, the Egyptians, speak and say, for evil, he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from the heat of your wrath and relent from this evil to your people. Again, he said, your people. He's like, turn back from this. Don't do this. Remember Abraham, Jishak, and Yisrael, your servants to whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I increase your seed like the stars of the heavens in all this land that I have spoken of. I give to your seed and they shall inherit it forever. <coughs> and Yahuwah relented from the evil which he said he would do to his people. And Moshe turned and went down from the mountain, and in his hands were the two tablets of the witnesses, tablets written on both their sides, written on the one side and then on the other. And the tablets were the work of Elohim, and the writing was a writing of Elohim engraved on the tablets. Can you imagine holding these beautiful sapphire tablets and they have the words that were, they were, they were engraved with Yah's finger. Uh, that would just be amazing, wouldn't it? But listen, what, what does John tell us? What did you, Yahushua t say in John? He said, no one's seen the Father, the Father and no one's heard the Father. Who's, who? who's Moshe talking to? Yahushua. He's talking to Yahushua. He's talking to that strong right arm of salvation. Uh, because from the time that um, that Adam sinned, y'all couldn't be around sin. sin at that point. When when Adam uh, corrupted his himself and became earthly, y'all could no longer be around him. So this is Yahushua that is being dealt with the whole time here. And we don't see that unless you go to the New Testament and you see Yeshua or Yahushua himself say, no one's ever seen the Father and no one's ever heard the Father except the Son. And when you see that, you realize, hey, they weren't dealing with Yah throughout the Old Testament. In verse 17, and you Yahushua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, and he said to Moshe, a noise of battle in the camp. <laughs> but Moshe said, it's not the sound of those who shout of might, nor is it the sound of those who cry in weakness, but it's the sound of singing that I hear. And it came to be, as soon as he came near the camp, that he saw the calf, and he saw the dancing, and Moshe's displeasure burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands and he broke all ten of the commandments right then and there at the foot of the mountain. That's it. He and actually did. He just how much corruption was going on. Yes, he did. That's right. But you also see. Okay, so guys, let's turn over. Before we go any further, I want to turn over to Numbers. While you're turning, what you see here is sin. I forgot what I was going to say. Sin causes uh, the, the, the law to be... You know, my thought's gone, sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. My... No, that's... It, but, I mean, it, it shows what sin does, that it breaks the law. It, it literally, it here it is. Sin it breaks the law. It, it puts a divide between you and y'all, for but sure. When we sin... We're breaking the law. That's I mean, right. This is a prime example, a physical example. Okay. And that's what, yeah, that's what sin is. is. Mm -hmm. But it's doing it right here, I mean, <coughs> in actuality. Mm -hmm. Okay, in Numbers 5.11. Okay, what I'm going to read to you is the Torah, or the law, concerning the adulterous wife. And it is amazing when you take this, this test, or this, and, and this actually was done not just with, the Hebrew people. It was done in the, the ancient Near East. If a man thought his wife, 
In most of the cultures, if a man thought his wife was committing adultery, he would take her down and toss her into this raging river. If she made it out, she was uh, not guilty. If she didn't, she was guilty of adultery. Glad we don't do that today. I know it. We would have a lot of drowned women. <laughs> and we'd have women dragging their husbands down there too, wouldn't they? <laughs> Heather's like... Teddy said the population would go the way down. <laughs> Bill Gates would have liked that. Yeah. Okay. And Ye Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Yisrael and say to them, When any man's wife turns aside and has committed a trespass, against him and a man has intercourse with her and it is hidden from the eyes of her husband and it is concealed that she has defiled herself and there are no witnesses against her, nor was she caught, but a spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he becomes jealous of his wife who has defiled herself or a spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he becomes jealous of his wife although she has not defiled herself. Then the man shall bring his wife to the priest and he shall bring the offering for her one-tenth of an ephah of barley flour and he is not to pour oil on it or put frankincense on it because it is a grain offering of jealousy an offering for remembering for bringing crookedness to remembrance and the priest shall bring her near and shall make her stand before yahuwah and the priest shall take set apart water in an earthen vessel and take some of the dust that is on the floor of the dwelling place and put it into the water so i mean he's literally taking water and putting dirt, dust off the floor into it. And the priest shall make the woman stand before Yahuwah and shall uncover the woman's head and put the offering for the remembering in her hands, which is the grain offering of jealousy, while the priest holds in his hand the bitter water that brings a curse. <clears throat> and the priest shall make her swear and say to the woman, if no man has lain with you and if you have not turned aside to uncleanness, under your husband's authority, be free from this bitter water that brings a curse. But if you have turned aside under your husband's authority, and if you have defiled yourself, and some man other than your husband has lain with you, then the priest shall make the woman swear the oath of the curse, and he shall say to the woman, Yahuwah make you, make you a curse and an oath among your people, when Yahuwah makes your thigh waste away and your belly swell. And this water that causes the curse shall go into your inward parts and make your belly swell and your thigh waste away. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book and shall wipe them off in the bitter water. So he's literally going to write them on the book and then I don't know how he's going to wipe them off into the bitter water unless maybe he's writing into sand. And make the woman drink the bitter water that brings the curse. And the water that brings the curse shall enter into her to become bitter. And the priest shall take the grain offering of jealousy from the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before Yahuwah and bring it to the slaughter place. And the priest shall take a hand filled with the offering as its remembrance offering and burn it on the slaughter place. And afterward, make the woman drink the water. And when she... When he has made her drink the water, then it shall be if she has defiled herself and has committed a trespass against her husband, that the water that brings the curse shall enter in her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall waste away, and the woman shall become a curse among her people. That's going to be very easy to see, isn't it? Your thigh waste away and your belly swell. It's going to be pretty obvious that, oops, you were guilty of the curse. But if the woman has not defiled herself and is clean, then she shall be clear and shall conceive children. So rather than a curse, it will turn into a blessing because children are blessings. Um, this is the Torah of jealousy. When the wife turns aside under her husband's authority and defiles herself, or when a spirit of jealousy comes upon a man, he becomes jealous of his wife. Then he shall make the woman stand before Yahuwah, and the priest shall do to her all this Torah. And the man shall be clear from the crookedness, but the woman bear her crookedness. So this is the test for an adulterous woman. Listen and hear what Moshe did, okay? Moshe has come down. There is all types of sexual immorality going on. The play is not just dancing and being jolly. There's lewdness going on in this camp. 
and Moshe is fixing to test them. What is idolatry? Okay, and what did they put before the Father? A golden calf. It can't go moo. It can't eat. It couldn't even get on the table by itself. Somebody had to lift it up there, right? Okay, what is adultery? What is adultery, guys? When, when a spouse cheat on your wife or husband. turns aside from their, spouse, from their husband or wife and they have an affair outside of that relationship, mm -hmm. a sexual affair, and they have defiled that relationship. That is called adultery. Adultery and idolatry are the same thing. The adulterous wife. Okay, now listen up. Okay, so Moshe just came down the mountain. We're back in Exodus. We're in um, chapter 32, and we're in verse uh, 20. He took the calf which they had made, and he burned it in the fire, and then he ground it into a powder, a dust. He scattered it on the face of the water and made the children of Israel drink it. Listen to me. Everyone in the camp drank this bitter water. Everyone. And Moshe said to Aharon, what did this people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? He's like, did they threaten your life? Did they twist your arm? Did they, what have they done that you would do this? Because I'm going to tell you something. Well, let me just show it to you. 32 and we're in 20... <laughs> okay, so so guys, guys in in the Samaritan text in thirty two verse ten, and this was not, it was not in the 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 um, Masoretic text. It says, and as for Aharon, Shema was very angry to destroy him, and Moshe prayed for Aharon. So, Yah. When Yah was up on the mountain, Yah told Moshe then, he said, Aharon has done this, and I'm going to destroy him. He's just going to wipe out Moshe's brother. Um, so, so that's why Moshe said, told Aharon, what did you do that made my master, Yahweh, so angry? And Aharon said, do not let the displeasure of my master burn. You know that the people, that the, the people, that it is in evil. And they said to me, Make us mighty ones who go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us out of the land of Mitzrayim, we do not know what had become of him. <clears throat> and I said to them, Whoever has gold, let them take it off. And they gave it to me. I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. It's like a miracle. Threw all that gold in there, didn't even have to mold it. This calf just leapt out. Pretty much what he's saying. Threw it in, out comes a calf. He must have thought Moshe was stupid. And Moshe saw that the people were let loose. Morally let loose. For Aharon had let them loose to their shame among their enemies. And Moshe stood in the entrance of the camp and said, Who is for Yahuwah? Come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves to him. Now, Moshe himself is a Levite. He's, he's of the, the lineage of Gershom, but he's a Levite, so is Aharon. Mm -hmm. And he said to them, Thus said Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, each one put on his sword on his side, then pass over to and fro from gate to gate in the camp, and each one kill his brother, and each one his friend, and each one his relative. He's, you know what he's telling them? Cut the cancer out. Cut this filthy cancer out of the camp. How are they going to know who, who has this cancer? What, what did we just read over, over here? They're going to be the ones who are 
running about with a swollen belly and a shrunken thigh. It's visible, guys. When, when he has delivered to them the test for the adulterous woman, they just drank their idol. They just drank the gold calf. Your sin will find you out. It will find you out. Okay, and, but he says to the Levite men, strap your swords on. Go from gate to gate and slaughter everyone that you see who has committed adultery with this idol. And Moshe said, oh, excuse me, in, the, in 28, and the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moshe, and about 3,000 of the people fell on that day. They killed 3,000 men and women. Well, it says men of the people fell that day. Um, but I'm wondering if there were women included in that. I don't know. What does and, it say in that one? Good question. And the sons Amen. of, of Levi did as Moshe's word, and about 3,000 men of the people fell that day. Mm -hmm. So it just still. Well, they were. Um, okay, I understand. It takes two to tango, guys. Yeah. But usually it just says okay. how many men, doesn't it? Yeah. It usually just says how many but men. But I mean. Out of sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he really did it. Ah. Uh, I mean, but you know what I mean? It's and he didn't let her. And listen, he didn't let her forget it either. When you go back but to the book of Adam and Eve. But, but, but no, what I'm saying is it falls on the man. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I was saying. It, yeah. They're the, supposed to be the head yeah. of the house. But the women in the adulterous case. Mm. Well, the women in the adulterous case, they were the ones who, who the curse fell on there. Well, and they were they were killed. So I'm. Um, Us women. I think we can We're assume eating. that anyone that was involved in the adultery yes, or the play, uh, <laughs> probably. I, I think every bit. I think every bit of the cancer, male, female, teenager under the age of twenty. I think everyone who had a swelled belly and a wasted thigh. I think they all died. Well, did they all participate in it? The 3,000 did. No, only the 3,000 that died were the ones that were guilty. They, they, they. It leaves you. It says, what did this people? Okay, so not everybody did participate in that, guys. Uh, and Moshe said, today you are ordained for Yahuwah today, since each one has been against his son and his brother, so as to bring upon you a blessing today. And it came to be on that next day that Moshe Moshe, excuse me, said to the people, You, you have sinned a great sin, and now I'm going up to Yahuwah, if I might atone for your sin. And Moshe returned to Yahuwah and said, Oh, these people have sinned a great sin and have made for themselves a mighty one of gold. And now you would forgive, if you would forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book, which you have written. Guys, this is the book of life he's talking mm -hmm. about. Now, I'm going to tell you what, Mo, what, what Yahuwah did. There is one book in Exodus where Moshe's name is never mentioned. So, Yah omitted his name from one of the books. And Moshe's in every single book of, of, of Exodus. I mean, he's there. He's part of it. But he did omit him from one of the books. But I want us to look at something. Well, let me, let me keep going. Yahweh said to Moshe, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. So he's saying, if the sinners are the ones that I'm going to blot, blot out of my book. I want us to look at some verses about this blotting out of the book. Because everyone's name is in the book of life. Right. We all start in there. What you don't want is you don't want him to blot you out. You want to be a blot <laughs> or a name. Look at Psalms uh, 69:28. And this says, um, I'm going to start at 27. In crookedness to their crookedness, and let them not enter into your righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. But I am poor and in pain. Let your deliverance, O Elohim, set me up on high. So 
here what caused them to be blotted? Their crookedness, their unrighteousness. And Dennis, in Deuteronomy 6.25, what, what does it say? So that is our righteousness. So if you're unrighteous, then you're not guarding and you're not doing. I'm going to go to Revelation 3, 5 really quick. In Revelation 3, 5, He who overcomes shall be dressed in white robes, and I shall by no means blot his name from the book of life, but I shall confess his name before my Father and before his messengers. Guys, this is the opposite of being a transgressor. This is someone who has, he's overcome. And what does is, what is y'all tell us throughout the word? Be an overcomer. White is purity. White is purity. So you're going to have to have a pure heart. That's it. Only those, uh, we'll see y'all, what, Matthew 5, 5. Yes. So, so those who are pure in heart we'll and, and have, have atoned for their sins, mm -hmm. they will be dressed in, in white robes and they will by no means have their name blotted from the book of life. Mm -hmm. But y'all will actually confess their name. Um, so well, I wanted to... That's an active word. I mean, it's, you got to do something to overcome. That's, an overcomer is an active word. So I wanted you to see that you're all in there. You just don't want to be blotted out. And now go, lead the people to the place of which I spoke to you. See, my messenger goes before you, and in the day of my visitation, I shall visit their sin upon them. Okay, so I want to hit one more place. Guys, go to Matthew 15, 24. I, come, step. Let, let, I want everybody to see this, Dennis. Mm -hmm. go to, I know. Go to Matthew 15, 24. She wants to sit in black and white. Yeah, I want everybody to see this because the first time I saw it, I was like shocked. I was like, how did this get in my Bible? And who are they? 1524, and he answering. Now he's talking, let me go to 23. But he did not answer her a word, and his chauntmans came and asked him, saying, send her away because she cries after us. And he, which is Yahusha, answering said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What is this saying? He wasn't sent to the Gentiles. Hello? Gentiles. Hello, Gentiles online. He was not sent <coughs> to the Gentiles. He was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How many find that as a surprise? Okay, so... In six. 10-6 also. So read it, Valerie. Uh, what? Yeshua sent these 12 out, having commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the nation, and do not enter to a city of Shemarian, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, so he was sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What is the house of Israel guilty of? What did we read in Hosea earlier this morning? Adultery. They are guilty of adultery. And what did y'all do? He scattered them. They're scattered across the entire world to the four corners of the earth. Corners. I don't know how you get corners. He said he came to get them. So it's round. How do you get corners? He said he came, to, but for the house. And then his disciples, he sent out uh, for the house of Israel. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so let's go to John 18, 11. Yes, we are supposed to be, well, we are the house of Israel. Well, we're supposed to be. What did you say, John? What? 18, 11. So, guys, if Yeshua came for us and we're the adulterous bride, we haven't studied this yet, but there is no sacrifice. <laughs> There's no sin offering for rebellion. If you know you're sinning and you <clears throat> do it anyway, there's no sacrifice you can make. Done. Okay, look at 18.11. Then Yahushua said to Kepha, Put your sword into the sheep. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Who did he come for? Washi. What is he going to have to do? 
our Savior is going to have to drink the cup of adultery for us because of our, our sin, because of our backsliding. Our Savior is going to have to do that. Uh, also, now we need to go to um, John. Oh, goodness. Come on. John 19, 29. And we're, I'm going to start in 27. Okay, I want you to listen to these words. Then to the taunt one, he said, see your mother. And he's speaking to John. This is John he's speaking to here. He said, see your mother. Uh, and from that hour, that taunt one took her to his own home. And after this, Yahusha, knowing that all had been accomplished, in order that the scripture might be accomplished, so he's got one more thing to do to accomplish everything that was written in the prophecy for him. And he said, I thirst. I'm thirsty. And a bowl of sour wine stood there. They filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and held it to his mouth. So when Yahusha took the wine, took the sour wine, he said, it has been accomplished. And he bowed his head. And he gave up his spirit. Did the does the word say anything about his belly being swelled or his thigh being? Guess what? We're innocent now. Amen. We're innocent. But he took he took the cup. This is the cup. You you will see this throughout scripture. The cup of dredges that he has to drink for the house of Israel. He drank it for us guys, for what we've done. Rebellious. The rebellious house of Israel. So the adulterous wife drank it. The house of the whole house of Israel. When it before it was split, out in the wilderness, everyone had to drink it. The priest, the the Levites, the every tribe, every person out there drank. All drank. Three thousand were guilty, and um, and Yahusha drank it for us. Let's see if there's anything else that I want to go over with. I am going to go over this part right here. It's in 34, and it is verse 6. And Yahuwah passed before him and proclaimed, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, and El, compassionate and showing favor, patient and and great in loving commitment and truth, watching over loving commitment for thousands, forgiving crookedness and trespass, transgression and sin, but by no means leaving unpunished, visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. I'm going to repeat this. He is an ill, compassionate, and showing favor. He's patient, and he's great in loving commitment and truth, watching over loving commitment for thousands. Loving commitment is those who are being obedient, is those who are honoring what they know their daddy wants them to do, but by no means leaving unpunished. Hello. Guys, listen. Is Abba, is he, is he known to be fair? Are his scales fair scales? Do they have fair weights? Yes. So if there's a wrong that's been done here and it's way down the, the scales like this, what is he going to do? You've got to pay. Mm -hmm. You oh, have to pay. Just because you're forgiven does not mean there's a payment. There's not a payment there to be made. Yeah. Okay? You go back into um, the, the, the um, commandments that we were going through prior, probably two weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe. If you stole, you had to, to pay back four times, five times. Okay? You steal one sheep, you got to bring five. There's a payment system. Yah has an, a payment of equality. You take, you're going to give back more than what you took. Mm -hmm. That even goes down to the tithe. If you tithe $200 and you go back and say, I need my tithe back, and you pull it back out, you gotta, when you come back, you got to pay 1000 
20% on tithes. Oh, it's not five. I've, not I've just added. That's on theft. Uh, that's on theft. Okay, so on tithes it is 20%. You're right. Thank you for correcting me. So it's 20% on uh, theft, uh, on tithes, five times on theft. But guys, there's an equal scale of equality. Just because you've been forgiven doesn't mean you get to skate free. Go ahead. You got a question. Gordon? No? no. Okay. It's but drinking. you learn from it's that. Drinking, I mean, that, that helps you to learn and not do it again because, I mean, you really do. Yeah, listen, if you just get to say, I'm sorry, and you're forgiven, you don't learn anything. then you haven't learned anything and nothing's done. You just do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. And guys, we need to remember this when we're dealing with our neighbors, when, when we're dealing with our friends, even our family. If you've broken something, even if it's by accident, you need to repay that. You need to take care right, of... Right, wrong, wrong. That's right. Okay, I got scripture. So, when you commit sin, you don't Yes. And so why is he been okay. Well, because you've been forgiven of it. I mean, he, that's not going to be held against you, but there's a payment. Um, say, say if 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 you took a life. Let's let's use that. Let's say you you hurt someone, you injured someone, and took their life. There's a repayment for that. You're forgiven. No, by his law. By Yah's law. Let me read this. Okay. First Corinthians ten thirteen. Okay. And that's one I think. No trial has overtaken you except as is common to man. And Elohim is trustworthy, who shall not allow you to be tried beyond what you are able, but with the trial shall also make the way of escape, enabling you to bear it. So what he's saying, when we have to go through and, and recompense, He's going to help us get through it if we're walking with him. If we are yes. trying, if we're striving to do what is right, he's going to make it bearable. I'm telling y'all, he does because yes. I've been through a lot of things, and he does give you the strength to get through it if you're walking with him. <laughs> Otherwise, it's pain and misery and oh my word <laughs> you did. that you uh, that you have to bear because he wants us to learn a lesson from it. He wants you to be aware and say, okay. I know. When it hurts your pocketbook, guys, <laughs> it's, it makes you remember. Mm -hmm. So if I go out and steal tires off of someone's vehicle, they come to me and go, I'm so sorry. <coughs> I've already sold the tires. I've got the money. I already spent it. They come to me and they, 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 they catch me. And I say, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I, I stole those. Will you forgive me? Sure. But I need new tires. Mm -hmm. You need to buy me new tires. What you saw, you, you most of the, a lot of the penalties are death if, there were, if, if all those parameters were in place. Um, but Yeshua took our place for our death sentence if you walked it right. If you walked it right. You don't have that second death. That's what he took the place of. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing you're you still have the consequences here in life of reaping what you sow. But Does, you've got but that if, if it's true repentance, if you're turning from it, he's gonna give you the strength to get through it. Yeah, I'm not denying what you said. I oh no, I'm just reiterating. I'm not But he will also give you the means to be able to pay that penalty right. back. Listen, yes. our, our legal system is not fair today. Yeah. Yes. I mean right. that they, they've caught criminals. Does a criminal have to do anything? generally the the poor victim doesn't even know the criminal's been caught and they get nothing back. Right. It's a loss to them. I, I, and I've had yes. big 18-wheeler tires stolen off my rigs. Did I get anything back for it? No. Did they catch the criminal? Yes. You had a rig now, stolen too. Had a truck it, stolen. I had a truck stolen. But listen, I would have made them come up here and work for free. I would have done that. But, that but they don't. Huh? <laughs> huh? That would have been slavery. According to society, according to society nowadays. Yeah, to, yeah, I, I would have been in trouble for something else then. Uh, well, just be right. In other words, if you made a quick decision and done something and harmed someone, mm -hmm. okay, even though that you did it, 
you still have to repay for what you did, yes. even though you admit you did. Yes. You have to repay you, you, what, you're, what you did is wrong. You're not going to be hit with a death you take, penalty. If you take God's way yes. and don't make a quick decision, you won't make that mistake. Uh, that's true. But accidents happen. I, I mean, know. there are going to be accidents. You could be out there slinging a, an axe, cutting trees, and the axe handle come off and wh whack the guy behind you and kill him. But there are accidents that happen, and, and you may not have known that. It, I mean, right. I've axed before. That's actually in Torah. We'll get to that. Oh yeah, all we that will. Uh, all of that, but but I mean, there's always the extenuating circumstances. But where I'm going is, if this individual's hurt and it has affected his family, then I'm probably going to be liable to take care of his family. Vicky, I know a man. That's the way it should be. What? I knew a man that was on a carpenter job. Uh huh. And he was trying to line a wall and he had a sledgehammer. And he was about two steps up on the step ladder and he swung and hit his top plate and he missed the plate and the ball walked back and he even hit the hammer and killed him. And he remembered it till the day that he died. Listen. And he was a good fella. He just, it was an accident, but it happened. That, he if he that's thought, his if he'd have thought, he'd have looked before he swung the hammer. But he didn't. He was looking at what he was doing, not what they were doing. Accident happened. Accidents are going to happen. It, 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 affect, it, it affected his life. I can tell you it affected his life because yeah. something like that, I mean, even if it's an animal that you accidentally hurt or hit, you, you remember that moment. It's a, tra it's a trauma, and it affects your wellness. Mm -hmm. Jerry Hogan. Oh, wow. He's dead. He's good friend. Oh man, that that would be very very hard. That would be very hard. Anybody else questions? <laughs> Gordon said, "I want to ask him more questions than you." <laughs> this is. Uh -huh, go ahead. If you're doing things the right way, mm -hmm. if you're being cautious, and I think that's where Charles is coming, yeah. if you check your equipment, you double check, right. make sure that the axe handles, if you put well, up we have to. We safety, have to be cautious. we do. If you put up safety barriers where, the, where no one could walk through where you were hammering, if you did the things that were necessary, and this is why we've got all these safety rules and lawsuits everywhere now, if you did everything that you were supposed to do, but I'm gonna tell you, sometimes people get in a hurry and they're like, I'm just going to slam one hammer into that plate. That's, that's all I'm going to do. That, but that's where sin falls into. Because you're rushing to do it. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, I need to rush to get this done so I can get paid. You know what I mean? Something that's you right. look out for yourself. That's, well, it, it would be carelessness. That's right. You're not, you're not stopping and doing it God's that's way right. and thinking. That's what yes, I was and, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I would bet, and it depends on how busy everyone is in this room, but I would be willing to bet that the majority of people in here do something dangerous every single day that could cost someone life, limb, or property. Everyone. Because we, we're living in a very fast-paced uh, world. And just be oblivious about it. What she's saying is just everyday living. And, and you don't, so fast. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I found, especially, uh, we've been working with my grandkids here, here recently, trying to teach them some stuff on the form. And I'm finding that I'm looking at the safety side of everything, like don't prop the ladder up, spread it out. Don't just lean that board over, it's gonna fall if the wind blows. So you start, you start having to look at things in a different way, but if you're not accustomed to doing that, you don't do it. It's beyond you, it just kind of goes over your head. So. It still doesn't keep you from not being liable for it. So there's payment. Yeah. I there is payment. Okay. We like stories. Vicky Sunday and Mike Sunday about three months ago. Uh oh, wait, hold on. Going, They're he, gonna hear this. It was gone. <laughs> it was gone. It was gonna cut a tree down. Okay. And uh Mike had already had the ladder up there. Mm -hmm. And whenever he did uh Vicky come home, they was in the house, he was taking a break. And uh, she said, That don't look safe to me. 
And he said, well, that's probably the safest thing I've done in two years. And then they heard a boom and the tree fell and told the truck. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm just telling it like it was told. That's funny. <laughs> no, it's That's not. Funny. It wasn't an answer. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, she, he didn't even cut the tree. <laughs> no, I just fell and told him to stop. Well, he he was heading the right direction. He was just a little bit slow about. Sorry, Vicky, about your truck. <laughs> it was his. One of his. It was his truck. Okay, so so we have had. We're done with with part two. Are y'all happy? Mm -hmm. Y'all well, want to talk about that. anything? I ate some of Bowers' cake. I'm happy. I didn't get an excuse. Yeah, we can't home with us. Please. <laughs> so we had a feast. We've uh, we finished up and we did answer. The house of Israel is an adulterous woman. The house of Israel is still an adulterous woman, guys, because she still has her back turned on y'all. And she is still... <laughs> She's whoring, she's whoring with uh, idols. I oh, know, such bad language out of my mouth. But, but that's what y'all says. But that's the second commandment. I mean, you know, it's, it just is. We're, it's just commandment not to do it. I mean, not in that physical, but the, the spiritual. So, 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 guys, when he calls her back home, when, when Israel comes back home, she will be repenting. But, but I mean, this is where we are. This is the latter days. And it goes right along with Ezekiel that we read earlier about the house of, of Israel and her adulterous ways. Go ahead, Valerie. In my 80 years of living, uh, raised in a mainstream church, I never heard any of this. Uh -huh. I never understood it. It was just foreign to me. So I see there is an awakening of everywhere, uh, of people hungry, because as you see, the churches are dwindling, because the spirit, and Brother Earl Anderson said in the last days, he said that Ichabod would be written over the church doors. Wow. And, and we're seeing that happening, uh, because with the spirit, there is joy, the, you know, faith, the, all of these things that come with the... Uh, it. And so we're see we're in. I can see that we are in the last days because it's so different from anything I've ever seen uh, in my time here on earth. It, it truly is. And I'm not just saying it because I think it's the last time, but the things I'm seeing are so are so bad. Yeah. So much bad. One to the worst. Huh? I mean, I can't get over that. What? I can't Hill? listen. I can't unsee the picture. Of that man thing just, on there with the long it? ratty hair and the triple chin. He couldn't even answer the question. Uh, he wouldn't. He, he wanted to be elected. <laughs> he, he, he would not answer the question because it would have incriminated him and they would not have approved his appointment. And they still may not. I mean, yeah, they, they, they talking about that one that was on TV this week? Yes. I see that thing. What, what is his, is it Rachel? Is his name Rachel? Rachel Levine. One of Biden's appointees. Wait, guys, listen. I can't hear him. That's phony. Wait, Wait guys, y'all be quiet. I can't hear. We can't hear. We're still online, guys. All these policies they're doing is like washing away everything that we, we try to get. Well, that's, that's, that's the Democrats. Democrats. It's not just that. We're going back to <laughs> we probably just lost half our audience. It's going all back to old ways, and that's what we're doing. And it's, it's not good. <laughs> it is not good. At all. Something's, something's stirring. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what is stirring, but something is stirring right now. But I, I'm, I'm going to be calling politicians in our area because I'm not happy at all with what the with the way things are going right now and y'all need to get active as well it doesn't hurt I, I know a lot of people say we shouldn't get involved in politics listen there's no separation of church and state if you don't protect our rights who's going to who's going to stand up for you huh 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 hmm. <laughs> heather's yeah. like yes we need to this, talk girl talk huh you this, basically what you're saying last night. okay good good i'm on 
<laughs> it's two against y'all, okay? Three? Can, we, can I make it three? Four? Us women. So we want to fight for our kids. We want to fight for our children's educations. We want to fight for everything. So listen, guys, you can either be silent and they're going to bowl right over you because the silent majority is going to lose and you're going to lose fast and we're going to lose all of our rights. We're going to lose our religious rights. We're going to lose our civil rights. You're going to lose your homes, your jobs. Okay. Listen, they're going to start. Okay. White's not in right now. Unless you take the mark of the beast, then you'll have everything. Aye, there you go. Never mind, That's everything's it. solved. <laughs> <laughs> so the mark of the beast, is it Sunday worship? I'm just saying, could it be? It's not. It's part of it. We all think it's, it's going to be a big red letter. It's not going to be. It's going to be It's going to be a so new world order. It's going to be a sign. It's going to be, you know, what you do, what you think. It's going to be multiple things. Yep. Oh, yeah. It is. Wait, you'll stop talking to me. <laughs> you did all that work for nothing. I just got, I just got some point. I was quick to the point. Okay. So, guys, listen. If, if you're live streaming with us, sorry that I just tripped you up and the screen was doing that, but you're okay. You're safe. But if you're listening, get on your knees and we need to be in prayer. Guys, we have got to be in prayer with y'all. And we've got to allow him to lead us and him to guide us. But sitting still and going, woe is me, is not the answer to the situation right now. Ma'am? Okay. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I like this one. So we have to be in that righteous state. And that's where you took us to Deuteronomy 625. We've got to find out who's righteous. And then there's about six or eight scriptures that say that he doesn't hear if you're not righteous. Okay, Valerie, I want us to go through those. Um, Do y'all have a second to, to hear these? Because, listen, guys, the, uh, what Valerie's talking about right now is so important. Yeah. I hear, I've heard pastors say, I've been praying for my son, and I just can't get him off drugs, and God just doesn't seem to be listening to me. And I'm like, okay, why would y'all not hear a prayer? Tell me. Y'all know. He's not because he's not. That's it. I mean, that's, the, that's what I was going to ask you. It's like, if it doesn't align with his will, we, we're praying for something. That's not just it. No. Listen, but, guys. You see what I'm saying? I, I do hear, I hear what you're saying, but listen, sometimes y'all let you have what doesn't line up with mm -hmm. his will because you petitioned him to the point that he's like, right. he's like the judge that says, okay. get this woman out of here. Give her whatever she wants. I'm like, God, I'm going crazy here. So, Valerie, yes. what, where, where Valerie is carrying us on, on this topic is the fact that if you have turned your back on the Torah, Yah will turn his back on your prayer because even your prayer is an abomination to him. Do you hear me? If you don't even want to hear what the Torah says, read. I, I'm not being bossy. Read. You are too, but that's read. okay. 1 Peter <laughs> chapter 3, verse 12. 1 John, chapter 3, verse 22. But read them. Oh, you want me to read them? Okay, let me give you somebody. Somebody. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I, I got Peter. Okay, you got 1 Peter 3, 12. 1 John 3, 22. Uh, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, Tim. Psalm 66, 18, Teddy. Psalm 34, 15, Dennis. Proper of 28, 9. Um, Leanne. What was that second one? Well, no, yeah. Proverbs, 20, yeah. Proverbs 28, verse 9. 1 John 3, 22. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. I'm in uh, 1 Peter 3, verse 12. Because the eyes of Yahuwah are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of Yahuwah is against those who do evil. And I want to I make some clarification here. Righteousness is defined in Deuteronomy 6, 25. Evil is defined in... Uh, Deuteronomy 17, I think. Deuteronomy 5, 9. 5, 9, okay. So, I'm going to pull up Deuteronomy 6, 25. You, if you, I'm 5, 9, I guess. Are you going to do 5, 9? Yeah, I got it right here. Okay. Okay, Deuteronomy 5, 9 says... 
you do you do not bow down to them nor serve them for I am a jealous no that's not it it is I think 17 okay Here it is. Okay, in Deuteronomy 17, verse 1. Okay. Do not slaughter to Yahweh your Elohim a bull or sheep which has any blemish, any evil matter, for that is an abomination to Yahuwah your Elohim. Wait, here we go. When there is found in your midst in any of your cities which Yahuwah your Elohim has given you, a man or a woman who does what is evil in the eyes of Yahuwah your Elohim. And here it is. In transgressing his covenant. What verse is that? 17, 1 through 2. Okay. Thank you. So, what is evil? Anything that transgresses his covenant. And his covenant is found in 19 when he said, If you will do everything that I said to do, then you will be my people. Wow. Okay, who's got the next verse? Um, it's 1 John 3. Who's on it? 1 John 3, 22. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we guard his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. In 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Okay. Okay. And this is the boldness that we have in him, that if we ask whatever according to his desire, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that he, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Okay, now these are not saying anything about the righteousness no. of the asker. But this is this is the importance, guys, is that you have to be righteous in order for these prayers to be answered. And that that righteousness comes from Deuteronomy 6.25. If you guard and do everything that Yah has told you to do, this is your righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's your righteousness to do that. So this is important. Um, yes, he will answer the prayers. If you are guarding and doing everything that he has told you to do, not just because it's his will, but Sorry. that's his will. That, that is his will, but if you're not righteous and walking in righteousness, yeah, that's not his will. then that's not his will. Yeah, like John 15, 7, it says, if you stay in me and I stay in you, my yes. word stay in you, you may ask whatever you, whatever you ask, your, your wish will come true. Right? Because you're in him. But, and yeah. listen, if you're in him, what are you in? You're in his word. If he's in you, he is the Holy Spirit. He is the word. He is the Torah. And not your own alone. That's right. If you're being led by the Holy Spirit, you're asking for his will. That's right. And you are already walking out his righteousness. Next. Psalm 34, 15. Uh, the eyes of Yahweh are upon the righteous and his ears their cry. Very good. Proverbs 28, 9. Um, I actually already have this highlighted. He who turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Yeah. So all of those are very, very definitive. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. I'm like, I just, I just grew well, we like four inches. We're not taught these things. You know, this is searching out the scripture. I would find one of these and I would write them down because. I want a list of those it too. It's quickened me. So guys, Listen. Do you have unanswered prayers? Have you been praying for something and it's just not being heard? My question would be, are you following Torah? Are you being obedient to his Torah? Do you even know what the Torah is? And if your answer is no, no, or no, or no to any of those, you can write any of us guys here, call. Well, are you give you anybody's phone number? No. no, but if you will write, we'll get back in touch with you and we'll talk. But Because listen, the truth has been stolen from Yah's children, and it is time that we learn what the truth is. Without it, you will die. Without it, your your prayers are not going to be answered. And the, a lot of the times, our prayers are concerning our children. Mm -hmm. You want those prayers answered, you better do what he's telling you. Because without obedience, he's not going to hear your prayers. Okay. Now, he might. That's what he said. Yeah. He, but, I mean, he, he has the option of saying, yeah, I'll go ahead and answer, answer that because I'm really after that child, and I want that child to survive and to grow and to thrive. He could do that, okay? But And Hasatan also knows us better than we know ourselves. And when we're asking and petitioning for things, 
if we're not righteous, well, it can go downhill. You know, and that reminds me, I was going to bring up just one other thing, but anybody have anything else that you want to throw in here while we're throwing everything in? Uh, I was just Psalm 66 is uh, binding. Wait, that. wait just a second. Go ahead, Teddy. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard inequity in my home, the Lord will not hear me. Right. That's a good one. Okay, so what, um, what I was just thinking about what you just said, Valerie, about um, um, that Hasatan will uh -huh. answer. Uh -huh. And that, wouldn't that go along with what, what, God, what was meant for evil? <coughs> God will turn into good. Okay. But but not always. Not always. Not always. But, but, uh, if, but he will. But, he but, but if you're not walking out the Torah uh -huh. and you're praying, Hasatan can answer your prayers yeah. just yeah. like y'all can, and he can come disguised. Because it's just our, our like wants. That. We want. Yeah, you want it bad enough. Not Listen, what he wants. a Christian can have anything mm -hmm. they want. Pray hard enough, you're gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Is it what you need? Nope. No. It's what you want. And he may give you what you want. And that's just not necessarily what you need. But guys, remember in the book of um, the first book of Adam and Eve, remember that um, and I was trying to find the, the verses where they were fasting. But remember um, remember that when they were fasting when they first came out of the garden, it was like 80 days before they actually ate food. Mm -hmm. They were still able to see and hear the angelic beings until they ate food. Moshe was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Generally, when, when they go up to the mountain, it's usually six days, seven days. I think it was on one occasion that it was two weeks before Yah appeared before them. We have to get Egypt. We have to get the fleshly part out of us before you can commune with y'all. You see what I'm saying? The more earthly we become, the more fleshly we become, the further away from the, the kingdom we are. Keep going. It's really important that I'm going to emphasize again, as I said in the beginning, it's so important that we really... Uh, study about the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, because he's the one that we need within us, because he'll lead us and guide us into all truth. He's the one that's going to quicken us when we're doing something wrong and say, Teddy, uh-uh, you remember what the scripture said. That's why we need to study to show ourselves approved of us. We see it as they approach it. We need to study, study. I've never studied before like I have. I went to church, went to Sunday school, did all the things. I prayed. I did all the things I was thought was right. It made me feel better physically because I went to church Sunday, emotional. on Sunday morning and Sunday night I went partying because I'd done what I was supposed to. It's over. That's right. So uh, we've, we've um, and I've learned through studying so much for me and that's what each one of us need to do. It's his spirit within us that uh, is going to uh, quicken us and have that hunger. I want more. I want more. I was telling Vicki, I've been on Hebrews 10, 26 for at least a week and it just gets deeper and deeper and I sent a little vows, some of it, and I said, you read this and see what you think about it because it's it's much more about us turning from him than we are really understanding when we turn from him and we know the truth. It gets pretty serious. You can have that. Oh, wow. I got a verse I can share with you somebody. You can have it. Everybody. I wrote it down. Yeah, I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to turn that camera on? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we're going to read Ecclesiastes 1.18. Mm -hmm. For in much wisdom is much grief, and who, he who increases knowledge increases suffering. Why is that? It's because we understand how the world really is working and where it's going, you know what I mean? And once mm -hmm. we're awakened to this deception most people are following, we are grieved. We are suffering. Yeah. And it burns within us. And we have, you know, we have uh, something burning within us that we have to speak. We can't keep it in, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're speaking this truth amongst 
all this room so that they can get out of that darkness, so that they can follow the light, so they can follow this truth that's written for us to preserve the last generation, those in the last days. Okay, will everybody hear? No, for the road is wide and great going to towards Shaul or the hell. Okay, but th they have to be called by Yah before they can hear what? The bubbles pricked. My bubbles pricked? No, your bubble gets pricked. Like what he's talking about. Oh, I was like, the bubble on my camera. The bubble is pricked, and then you are, uh, <laughs> yes, initially it is a uh, multi emotional type of thing. However, what does Imunah mean? It's faith. the faith, but it's the faith that we know that He allows or causes all things. It's the complete acceptance of everything going on because it's His will. So we, there's no reason to be any kind of panicked or worried or upset or anything. About what? About anything. Oh, yeah, because we should have the faith that right. we're going to take care I mean, of. Yes, yeah, so your bubble's pricked, and initially it is mm -hmm. kind of <coughs> an emotional roller coaster, but you shouldn't. But, that's but without the shouldn't. pricked bubbles, you're not going to find yourself on your knees praying. Mm -hmm. And so there should be no... No, there should be no panic. There should be no panic. No. But there should be an action. Yeah. Otherwise, you're a tree that's useless, and you might that's as well just be cut point down. That's my was what Valerie Torah. was saying. The Ruach is Yeshua. Yeshua is the Torah. Right. I think we all know the, the, yeah. the loop. The loop. Um, and then, so the Torah is what you got to put in to know how to act. Exactly. You know? Yeah, otherwise, there's okay. no point in... The more the Torah you put in, the more the Ruach you're going to have. Yeah, but, but the more Torah you're putting in is great, but how if you're putting it in, are you doing it? Yeah. Are you doing it? That's what matters. If it's in your heart, you're going to. Mm -hmm. If it's up are here, you yeah. reading. It's just, it's the more you learn, it should be like that cake that I made today, which wasn't very good. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was really good. It looked pretty. It looked pretty. Oh, it was hot. But, but, hey, sis, can I take it home? The word should be like <coughs> that with us. We should be so desirous of that it's so good. That's why you're doing it, because you want to, not because you want to. Exactly. Right, that's yeah. exactly it. That's it. What did so, you say uh, the Wednesday night? You said something that was so deep. But I, uh, that was Wednesday night. I don't know. No, it was talking about what we're talking about, that when we're called, but then you said... Well, uh, remember, you know, uh, you were going, you were going in there, and we, we was talking about opening eyes, opening, opening eyes. Not everybody's eyes are going to be opened at the end of church. I mean, you would think, duh. I mean, look at your scripture. <laughs> you know, I mean, open your, open your eyes, but they, they you know, he opens the eyes of the ones that are going to be willing. I mean, you, you can not be willing, not be, you, you got to be serious. If they're, they're going to be serious about it, I mean, he knows who's going to be serious mm -hmm. who's not. I mean, he's such a good man, I mean, but he might not open his eyes because he's not, he's not going to be obedient. He, and and y'all know this. If, if you're willing and, and, and there's a point, I guess, y'all knows if we're going to be willing or not, then you'll open our eyes. But you said that night, it's a choice. It, it, it's that mm -hmm. choice. I mean, we can mm -hmm. to go back to Egypt too easy. You know, he, he knows this. Uh, so, he, it's I a mean, choice, what we do. We, we're either choosing life every day or we're choosing death every day. And we must choose life. And live. That's what Moshe said. I said before you today, life and death. Choose life and live. Okay, I found in Psalm 66. Seven, 66, seven, 17. I called to him with my mouth and praise with all my, in my tongue. If I had seen witness, if I had seen witnesses in my heart, y'all would, would not hear. Truly, Elohim has heard me. Has he given he to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be Hel Elohim, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his loving commitment from me. That's the what? 
And these are scriptures that we should write. And I have to write them down in the back of my Bible because I can't remember a few of them, I guess. But I have them written down so if somebody says something, I know where to go. Uh, the truth, the truth is what we need to seek uh, every day. And, uh, and walk in that newness of life because it's just so much that we have, have lost in the years that have just slowly been taken. Because uh, I can, I mean, I've seen it, I, I, and I see it. There's a restoration going on, there, guys. There's, we're, there's we're, getting, we're getting to be part of it. Okay. We're, we're part of that remnant, and we just need to pray for each other, support each other, back each other, because we're, <coughs> we're small. Because what? We're small. Well, we're tiny. The, the nation of Israel was the smallest. He doesn't take a great big bunch because he wants he wants people to see the power in this group. I was going to say we may be we may be small, but I mean there's a lot of knowledgeable, knowledgeable yeah, mm -hmm. people. And he wants everybody. He's not a respecter of persons, but it's what we do. It's how hard we study and we read in those quiet times, not when we're in this big group, but when you're at home. Uh, read. I mean, I. I have just recently become so, uh, every day I've got to read something. I've got, and then I get on one scripture and it, it captivates me and then I go to something else and here I am on this trail going, you know. So it's, it's interesting. It is an interesting life and everyone should protect you know, you know what I recommend? That we share as we're coming <laughs> up to this knowledge, we share it, you know, on social media or anything so that you can open other people to this knowledge also, you know, because mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we got to be. We got to be fruitful. Good fruit bearing plants, you know what I mean? And we can't we can't just harbor all this to ourselves. We mm -hmm. gotta share it. We gotta you know, we gotta be also fruitful with these this spiritual knowledge that we're reading. Yes. Well this Ezra seven that has you know about the spirit in seven days, mm -hmm. I can't tell you the number of people and I'm sure some of them think she is just crazy as a loon. I don't even want to talk to her no more. But it has opened the doors for people, it gives them food for thought. And they start thinking, hmm. She's not really that crazy. Food Let me look action. that up. Huh? Food for action. Yeah, food for action. Yeah. Well, like, we talked a lot about Sabbath today. Um, you know, I mean, there's there's some fundamentals. I mean, we have the Sabbaths, the weekly, we have the high Sabbaths, the, the complete observance of those. We've got the food laws, um, tithing, Zeet seats and I mean those are the, the, the main fundamentals you find when you when you come into this and uh, then after that you get basically the details of being a fair and even person and uh, I mean it's, it's that, that, that's that's I mean that's the summary of it I mean there's more details to it of course but I mean do the mechanics and you'll see I, like when, when I when I first came into this, I I came at a perfect time. I felt like it was very it was very nice, um, and I just decided I was gonna do do it before I even understood it, and you'll understand it from doing it. Is my personal opinion. You get a lot more understanding from just doing it. Yeah, and I mean when I came into it, I was solo, so I mean it was you know sitting outside enjoying the Sabbath alone with Mark Biltz <laughs> on the and Marky. With Mark Biltz and his little crew and Marky Mark. Huh? Marky Mark, I'm making a joke. Marky Mark Biltz and started with him, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Uh, because that's where I started. Uh, I mean he's you started one, with him in the boss Yeah. And so yeah. I had no idea I guess what we're doing on Sabbath. And you can know all you want, but uh, just make sure you're you're practicing. Because all the knowledge isn't going to open up until no. you practice it. Oh, i got to share this with y'all now that you brought that up. This is in Ecclesiastes. I don't know where... I mean, I actually just read the, the last deal. But let me go ahead and read the whole chapter, if y'all don't mind. 
because it's pretty deep. So it's first, uh, I believe it's first. But yeah, it's first Ecclesiastes 1 1. The word to call Helet, which is, um, I guess you could call them a cinder company. But that's what it means in Hebrew. He's the, I believe, the son of uh, Shalom, uh, Solomon. Solomon, uh, Solomon. Okay, so this is what he writes. The son of Dawid. Oh, actually, he's the son of Dawid. Sovereign in Jerusalem. Futility, futility, says Kohelet. Futility, futility. All is futile. What does man gain from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? A generation passes away and a generation comes, but the earth stands forever. The sun also rises and the sun sets and hurries back to the place where it rose, going to the south and turning around to the north. Turning, turning on its rounds, the wind turns. All the rivers runs into the sea, yet the sea never overflows. To the place from which the rivers come, they return again. All matters are wearisome. No one is able to speak of it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what shall be. What has been done is what shall be done. And there is no new matter under the sun. Is there a matter which is said? See, this is new. It was here already, long ago. There is no remembrance of former ones, nor is there any remembrance of those that are to come, by those who come later on. I, Kohelet, was sovereign over Israel and Jerusalem, and I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that has been done under the heavens. This evil task Elohim has given to the sons of man, to be humbled by it. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and see all was futile, and feeding on wind. The crooked would not, could not be straightened, and what is lacking could not be counted. So I spoke to my heart, saying, See, I have attained greatness. I have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem, and my heart has seen much wisdom and knowledge. And I set my heart to know wisdom, and to know madness and folly. I know that this is too is feeding on wind. For much, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases suffering. Biggie, wake up. Are <laughs> <laughs> you serious or no? Huh? Hello. <laughs> that was a good one. Next. Well, Solomon found out that different things. I mean, that he yeah. had so much wisdom, so much He had stuff. so much wisdom. Yeah. Ecclesiastes, he wrote all of that, didn't he? Yeah. It was actually his son who wrote that. Solomon. Go ahead, let it. it. was the son of David, wasn't it? Solomon's son of David. Yeah. And I think he wrote... He wrote I think he wrote Seven. Ecclesiastes. But maybe there was another writer. Oh, it could have been Shlomo. Yeah, Shlomo was uh, the writer of Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing. And that's right. <laughs> Queer. Anything else, guys? No? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> okay. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thanks for joining us today. It has been fine. And I ate too much food. <laughs> Bless you, horse. I know. Uh, guys, we will be back on Shabbat. And next week's tour Porsche, oh, we were going to announce what that next week's tour Porsche is and encourage everybody to study it. Read it, yeah. And read it. Excuse me. I didn't mean to disappear on you there. I should have already done this. Okay. So this next week is going to be Vayakel, and he assembles. It's going to be Exodus 35, 1 through 38, 20. 1 Kings 2, 13 through 26, and 40 through 50 in uh, the second chapter of 1 Kings, and then 2 Chronicles 9, 6 through 11, and this next week is another double Torah Portia, okay? So that's the first one, and the second one is Pakuti, and Pakuti is um, accountings of, and it is going to be Exodus 38, 21 through 40, 38. 
We don't often have these double Torah portions. Are we that far behind? We're not far behind. It's just a double oh, Torah portion. Oh, I remember that, yes. And uh, 1 Kings 7, 51 through 8, 21. 2, Chronic, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 18. And I'm going to repeat all that so you can double check. Okay. Vayakel. Exodus 35, 1 through 38, 20, 1 Kings 2, 13 through 26, and 40 through 50, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11, and then the second Torah portion is Bakuti, which is Exodus 38, 21 through 40, 38, and then 1 Kings 7, 51 through 8, 21, 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 18. So steady, steady, steady for this next week. And we will probably do uh, this next week the same as we did this week. And then after that, when we go back to one tour Portia, we will be doing, and we'll ha we will be able to do one tour Portia until April the 4th. And we have got the Feast of Unleavened Bread will be on, um, this one's not right. Did you do that not data? Did you get any of that? It's in the front of your Bible. Just start wherever you can. I don't think I'm going with the Bible. Okay, so guys, listen. Pesach is on Tuesday, the 6th of, of April. Oh, okay. Is, that, is it usually in April? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, Can't yeah, it, it just depends on when the uh, first day of the year falls. Yeah. But uh, the, the Pesach is, it, our Passover is always on a Tuesday night. And then Unleavened Bread starts on Wednesday. And we are on, for those of you um, who may not know it, we're, we are on the Zadok calendar. And there is actually a totally different... Uh, tour Porsches in the uh, Samaritan, and I'm gonna look at those. What? Different tour Porsches. So we're we're just gonna look at every we're just looking at everything, and uh, this year when we finish up our tour Porsches, we are going, which will be in about September October. Once we do that, we're gonna start on different studies each week. We're still gonna hit highlight the tour Porsches. I need to. Uh, people that are new. Yeah, for, for people who are new, but it's just going to be a highlight, and then we're going to go on to the new study, because everyone in here, just about everyone except for two, have been through the Torah Porsches many times. You can all teach it <laughs> by now. That's why I was waiting to see if y'all were going to pick up while I go and teach, but yeah, no, y'all had to call me out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, if y'all have got any questions, please send us a message. Uh, Get in touch with us if you want a scriptures Bible, messenger me and we'll send it to you for free. And today we say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat. Shalom.